Hello, welcome to Invention versus Innovation. This is a history program from the Route Museum in Buffalo Grove. My name is Debbie Fondre. I'm the museum curator and I'm the one who will be talking to you today. Let's get started. History museums are filled with examples of inventions. Some inventions are world famous. That first picture is one of the first light bulbs ever invented by Thomas Edison. Some inventions are not as famous, but still useful. The second picture is the first pop-up toaster. That's pretty cool too. Museums have so many inventions. The other picture shows storage at the Smithsonian. That's just one little part of all the inventions they have that you don't even get to see all the time. So what makes something an invention? An invention is an object, like a machine, which is brand new. It does something that has never been done before. Today, we are going to look at two inventions, the telephone and the camera. The telephone. The first telephone was invented in 1876 by Alexander Graham Bell. That picture shows the telephone, and then the other picture shows the patent, where he described what the telephone was and why it worked, and that he was the first one to invent it. It doesn't look like what we're used to, does it? Even this picture, which shows one of the early telephones you could get in your house in the 1880s, still doesn't look a lot like telephones do today. That's because inventing something is really only the first step. Why was the telephone special? Before the telephone, telegraphs were the most form common form of quick communication. Other than that, people wrote letters. That picture on the top is a telegraph key and it would tap out the message in code. So in order to send a telegraph, you would have to go to the office, write down your message, give it to someone who was operating that telegraph key and they would tap it out. It would sound like beeps, beep, 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 beep. And then at the other end, someone would listen to those beeps, translate them, write them into a message like you see on the bottom, that's a Civil War telegraph, and then someone would take the message to your house. It worked, but you sure couldn't have a conversation like you can on the phone. So what made phones special was what you can see in this advertisement right here. Phones let you talk right to the person you wanted to, and you could have a conversation back and forth. That wasn't something people had been able to do before, so it was amazing. But, like I said before, inventing something is only the first step. There were problems with the first phones. There was the problem of distance and privacy and price. Let's look at them one at a time. Distance. That first phone that was invented it could only work within six miles. That's not very far. So if you wanted to call someone even a little bit farther away, that didn't work because the phone wires only went that far. Number two, privacy. The first phones, you had to lift up the part that you talked into. You can see there's not a dial and you would talk to an operator and tell them who you wanted to call, and then they would hook it in at the main headquarters, and then the phone would ring on the other end, which means someone always knew who you were calling. And price. This shouldn't be a big surprise, but the first phones were very expensive. This wasn't something that everybody could afford. In fact, it was really only a thing for rich people who lived in cities because they were close enough and they had enough money. Innovation would help solve these problems. An innovation makes an invention better. So the phones were good, but let's see if we can make them better. Solving problem number one, distance. The innovation, better phone wires. Once phone wires got better, 
and telephone poles were created to help hold them up. And then they were able to be put outside in the weather. They had to solve all these problems. Now, small towns could have phones. That top picture shows people putting up the phone wires. You can imagine it took a while to just get the phone wires up before people could even think about having phones. But by 1913, Buffalo Grove and Lincolnshire have phones in town. Not everyone has phones in town, just a few of the big buildings. But if you look at the picture at the bottom, this picture shows the intersection of Milwaukee Avenue and Route 22 in 1910. Can you spot the telephone poles? Check them out. People could go to the Half Day Inn to make a telephone call. In Buffalo Grove, people would go to the Widener General Store to make a call. So we had phones, but you didn't have them in your house yet. Solving problem two, privacy. The innovation, dial telephones. With early telephones, every call you made had to be connected by an operator. That's a picture of a phone operator on the top. A phone call would come in, you would talk to her and tell her who you wanted to call. She would plug in one of those wires and then the phone would ring on the other end and your friend could pick up and you guys could talk. Dial telephones let people call directly without having to tell someone else who they were calling. So once you had a dial telephone, you could just dial your friend's phone number and talk to them and you didn't have to go through an operator. You know what though? Innovation takes research. Once there were dial telephones and a phone that looked like the picture on the bottom, you needed it to work for the most people. So in 1919, AT&T measured 10,000 people's heads so that they could develop a better handset for people to use. If they wanted people to use the phone, it had to work for the most people. Also, one innovation leads to another innovation. Once people had dial telephones, Walgreens became one of the first drugstores to take phone orders. Isn't that neat? Solving problem three, price. This problem was much harder. In 1920, 35% of families had a telephone at home. That means for 10 houses, only three would definitely have a phone, and one might have a phone. 15 years later, by 1935, only 32% of families had a phone at home. If phones were useful, why did the number go down? It was because at that time, the United States was in a depression. Lots of people lost their jobs and didn't have money. So even if phones were useful, you could get along without them. It would take more than 10 years for the number to start going back up again. What do you think caused that change? World War II causes innovation, a lot of innovation. During World War II, many innovations happened to help the war effort. This included innovations to the telephone. Field phones were developed to use on the battlefields. These phones could be used almost anywhere and they didn't need a separate battery. They helped people get important information as quickly as possible. By the time the war ended, people were used to getting information quickly by phone and they did not want to give that up. After World War II, phones became something people needed at home, not just a luxury item. In 1952, the Illinois Bell Telephone Company was installing one new phone every minute for that whole year. So people really believed in phones now. Do you think innovation stopped there? What innovations came next? And look at this 1950s advertisement for phones. What were some of the reasons people might decide that having a phone was a good idea? Are those still reasons that make sense today? 
Now we're going to talk about a different invention. We're going to talk about cameras. One of the first working cameras was invented by Louis Daguerre in 1833. That's a picture of that camera right there. How does it work? To focus the camera, you would have to slide the back of it in or out. And the arrow points to the metal plate, which becomes the picture. The camera took over three minutes to take a picture. When it was done, there was a picture printed on a very thin sheet of metal. This was the way cameras worked for the next 30 years. This is a daguerreotype of Abraham Lincoln when he was just 37 years old. He would not be president for another 19 years. So you can see the, detect the daguerreotypes worked, but do you think there was room for innovation? This was the invention, but there's still room for improvement, isn't there? Innovation number one, film. In 1888, George Eastman invented a better way for cameras to capture images. Instead of using thin sheets of metal, his cameras would use very thin sheets of plastic coated with chemicals. That was film. You can see an example of it on the right-hand side there. This was important for many reasons. Film was cheaper. Now everyone could afford a camera. They really could afford a camera. The Kodak Brownie box camera was invented to use film and it only cost a dollar. It looked like that. Film was lighter too. Now cameras were smaller and easier to carry so you could take them everywhere. Think about how that box camera looks compared to that big wooden camera that you just saw before. One of them you could take around, one of them probably not. And film could make reprints. With the metal plates, you could only get one picture. With film, if you liked the picture, you could print many copies onto paper. A box camera took a good picture. This picture of people swimming in Buffalo Grove was taken with a box camera in the 1920s. Innovation number two, color pictures. As soon as cameras were invented, people wanted color pictures. This turned out to be a difficult problem to solve. For many years, if you wanted a color picture, you would have to take a black and white picture and then color it in by hand. That's what happened here. The first picture was black and white and then someone very carefully used either paints or like a colored pencil to color in the parts to make it look more like a color picture. It wasn't until many years later, it wasn't until 1936 that color film for camera was invented. The film was called Kodachrome and it worked very well, but there were still issues. So you can see there's a big difference between the bottom picture and the top picture. But developing the film was complicated. It was a 14 step process. So you had to send your film to a lab and wait for the pictures to come back in the mail. Developing the film was expensive. A color picture would cost more than twice as much as a black and white picture. So if you wanted to take a lot of pictures, that could really add up. What do you think? Was there still room for more innovation? Innovation number three, instant cameras. In all of the cameras we've seen so far, you have always had to wait for your picture. After taking a picture, you sent the film away to a lab, waited for the pictures to come back in the mail, and then you would finally get to see how your pictures turned out. This meant it might be weeks between taking a picture and seeing it. All of that changed in 1972 when Polaroid introduced a camera that would automatically print your picture in a minute. Ideas for innovation come from everywhere. Edmund Land invented the instant camera after his four-year-old daughter asked him why she couldn't see the picture he had taken right away. Isn't that cool? So, 
What happens when two innovations get combined? Innovations change phones and innovations change cameras, but what happens when two innovations meet? The first camera phone was made by Kyocera in 1999. It cost about $325 and it could hold 20 pictures before the memory was filled up. That was 20 years ago. What innovations have happened to camera phones since then? And what innovations do you think will happen next? The end. Do you have any questions? Email us. If not, thank you for listening and have a very good day.